Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. You think this will come up? I got rid of Roe v. Wade. Supreme Court justices and the Supreme Court ruled to end the moral and constitutional atrocity known as Roe v. Wade. Very important. <laughs> Uh, we did the Roe v. Wade thing, which have been, they've been trying to get it done. If it weren't for me with Roe v. Wade, you wouldn't even be talking about this. Getting rid of uh, Roe v. Wade was an incredible thing. I'm the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. And what I did by killing Roe v. Wade, which everyone said was impossible. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it. And I'm proud to have done it. Do you think he's lucid in, in all of those? Uh, cl- no, I don't. But anyway, do you think that'll come up tomorrow? Do you think it will? I, I think it will. I really do. I think it will. And uh, the Supreme Court itself will come up tomorrow. The Supreme Court today dumped three, uh, th- I don't even want to call them decisions. This is why nobody's talking about it, okay? This is why it's not, uh, you know, echoing around the world. Oh, the Supreme Court ruled because they didn't. They didn't. They kicked the can down the road. You know the mitford Pristone decision, right? The mitford Pristone decision, just to jog your little memory there, uh, is they didn't have standing. The doctors who were objecting to mitford Pristone being available uh, by virtue of a 20-year-old FDA approval of mitford Pristone after a 20-year trial, let's just say, in Europe without, uh, you know, a, a major contretemps. So uh, the doctors who were part of the plaintiffs in the Mifepristone case uh, were not harmed. The Supreme Court said that they had no standing because no harm came to them. They already had religious exemptions as doctors to not treat pregnant women with mifepristone or to not treat pregnant women who needed an abortion to survive or to not treat women who had twins in utero and uh, one was dead and they didn't want to get involved in that kind of a thing so they already had a religious objection available to them and therefore they had no harm come to them through prescribing or not prescribing mifepristone because they never had to that means no standing they did the same damn thing again today. They did the same thing today, okay? With um, the Idaho, uh, there was a decision that needed to be made about women in Idaho, and it's a real easy one if you think about it, okay? The state law in Idaho bans abortion. The federal law, which is supreme to state law, says that if a woman shows up at your hospital needing abortion care to save her life in an emergency room scenario and you take any government funding, whether it's Medicare reimbursement, Medicaid, whatever, you have to, under federal law called EMTALA, you have to treat her and you have to get her out of critical, uh, a critical situation, even if it includes abortion. Supreme Court didn't decide it. They just refu- they just said you know they didn't want to they didn't want to make a decision about it so you know they just said go ahead for now uh, we'll send it back to the lower court um, you know uh, we don't think you had standing to bring this case and so um, you know uh, we're gonna do a six to three uh, and let you do what you do but um, basically we're just gonna delay it until another time what. Yeah, they, they refuse to resolve it. Same thing with the social media case. There was a case today, so-called decided, not decided. The case uh, about social media was whether or not anybody inside of the government, the CDC, okay, the Center for Disease Control, can even interact or call or communicate with a social media platform to tell them or show them or demonstrate to them that the information they are disseminating by virtue of their algorithm is wrong, false, dangerous, bad, counter to the truth. They they have to go to the Supreme Court to figure out whether or not that impinges on a private company's right to free speech by the government, whether the government was inserting itself into an arena where free speech was being chilled. And guess what? 
They didn't decide that one either. They refused to weigh in on what is the line between disinformation, misinformation, and correcting information that is disinformation or misinformation on social media platforms. They refuse to weigh in on what the First Amendment actually does or what it's for or how it works and how social media platforms are subject to it or not subject to it. They just kicked the can. They did it. I mean, you know, Sean said to me today, you know, they, 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 were, they were dodging bullets faster than uh, the guy from uh, The Matrix. I said they wish they were that cool. But honestly, I, they just refused. Why did they take these cases if they weren't going to decide these cases? That's the crazy part. Like, they get to choose and pick what they will hear, what they will, uh, you know, uh, uh, listen to, what they will, you know, uh, mull over for us, right? They, they get to pick and choose. And the only decision so far that they actually decided was the one about corruption, public corruption. Oh, they have a definite opinion on public corruption. This was the weirdest case ever, okay? This was the case of an Indiana mayor, okay, of a little tiny town in Indiana, a town that I never heard of uh, until reading, you know, this, uh, this, this case. I can't even remember. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I don't even know what the town is. Okay. Anyway, this mayor of Indiana was accused of public corruption. Okay. And he's been fighting it. He got convicted and he's been fighting it all the way to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court could have a case uh, about public corruption. They said, yeah, let's take this one. Let's take this one. So the man's name is James Snyder. James Snyder was convicted. He's a Republican, was convicted of taking $13,000, a puny amount, okay, when you consider the amount of money that's sloshing around our political lives. Anyway, James Snyder was convicted of taking $13,000 in exchange for giving a trucking company a million dollars worth of business. Seems like public corruption to me. But the Supreme Court actually decided this. And Brett Kavanaugh wrote this, okay? <laughs> it was a gratuity. It was a tip. It was a tip. And the problem seemed to be that if you give the tip before the favor is granted, it's sort of a bribe. So you should give the tip after the favor is granted, and then it will be considered a gratuity. I swear to God, some gratuities, he wrote, gratuities, can be problematic. Others are commonplace and might be innocuous, Brett Kavanaugh wrote. The lines aren't always clear, especially since many state and local officials have other jobs, he said. So it's a tip, everybody. You're allowed to tip out your waiters and waitresses and your mayor and your representative and your senator and your Supreme Court justice. Tip them out. Send their nephew to private school. Buy them an RV. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.